Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. So this is an in-depth tutorial about the sequence replicator behavior, which is a feature of Apple Motion that I think a lot of people found a little bit mysterious. So let's demystify it. OK, so for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to go with a project of 1920-1080, frame rate of 24 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. I'm just going to set up a basic scene here. Let's just bring in a color solid. Let's make it gray. And I'm just going to make a new group above this. And I'm going to grab the circle tool and draw it a nice circle. Geometry, let's set the size to 50. Come over to properties, center it up. Just going to give this some color so it's not a boring white. OK, so obviously we need to start by turning this into a replicator. So object and replicate. I'm going to stick with rectangle and tile fill. I'm going to open up the size. I'm going to set that width to something like 1800. I'm going to set the number of rows to one just to get us started. And I'm going to increase the columns to, say, 18. So we've got a nice long array like that. So let's now add a sequence replicator. So come down to replicator sequence replicator now this i think is a silly name they've got this completely wrong in typical apple fashion if you've ever used music software you'll know what a sequencer is now a sequencer is something that takes a static a set of notes and then sequences them over time according to the parameters that you set so this is exactly what the sequence replicator is doing. And really, it should be called a replicator sequencer because it's sequencing what happens to this static array of our replicator. Anyway, I think it's helpful to be able to think of this as a sequencer, in fact. So let's just look at what we can do here. We've got five different parameters that we can affect using this sequencer, rotation, color, opacity, scale, and position. And we can have several of these at the same time. I'm going to choose opacity, and I'm also going to choose position. I'm going to set the opacity to zero, and I'll set the position to, I think, 270. And if we now run it, you'll see that the dots fade out from the middle and fly upwards. And the reason for that is the sequencing is two and we are going to zero opacity and two to 70 pixels on Y. So why is it happening from the middle? The answer to that is over here in the replicator itself. You'll notice that the origin is set to center. But if we set that to right, it's going to take place from the right. So from the right, they are fading out and moving upwards. And you'll notice we've got several other options here. Several of these don't apply because we've only got one row. So I'm just going to increase the number of rows to, say, three. And then we can see what is happening. So let's switch to lower right, for example. And you can see that the sequencing is happening from the lower right, or, you know, we can choose any of these others. So upper right is the opposite. And you'll notice that we've also got a build style, which is by default is across, but we could set that to, for example, by column. And you can see that that's happening one column at a time, or indeed one row at a time if we select by row. And while we're here, let's also turn on shuffle order, because shuffle order basically just randomizes the sequence and that's pretty useful and you'll notice you can just shuffle the random seed to get a different random result so let's turn that off and let's switch back to left and let's switch back to one row just so it's a little bit easier to understand so what else can we talk about the sequencing currently is two and we're going to zero opacity and to that position but we could equally well do it from and so now we're fading in from zero opacity and moving down from 270 pixels on Y. We could also go through. And so what that does is it moves that sequence of operations through the array sequentially like that. It's more obvious if we increase the number of loops. So I'm going to increase the number of loops to four. And you can see that we're going through like that as against from, which looked like this. 
So the thing with through is that as the animation passes through the array, it returns the elements of the array back to their original state rather than leaving them in their transform state. Whereas with from or to, they're left in their transform states. OK, so that's through and through inverted is simply simply the opposite. It just inverts these values. So instead of going to zero opacity, it comes from zero opacity and so on. So I'm just going to simplify things here a little bit. I'm just going to remove that opacity like so. So remove opacity. So we're literally just now dealing with the positional information. And I want to talk about some of the other controls. I'm not going to go into the unit size because that's not entirely relevant at this point. I might come back to it at the end because custom is quite an interesting one. But we can talk about the spread so the spread is basically a soft fall off that determines how many of the neighboring elements of the array are affected by the animation as it passes through. And that makes for a smoother result. The speed obviously just determines whether the animation is going to be linear or it's going to be one of these other options. I'm going to switch back to constant speed, but I will come back and discuss custom at the end. So let's talk about these end conditions. If we switch to ping pong, you'll see that the animation reverses itself once it gets to the end of the loop. And the thing with wrap is that it will wrap around rather than stopping at the end. You'll notice that when we get to the end of a loop like so, it's already starting on the next one as against hold where it's not starting. So wrap is quite useful for if you want a nice smooth sequential series of loops like that. So I want now to talk about the most interesting part of this, and that's from keyframes. So if we select that, you'll notice that nothing is happening, apart from the fact that our position is at 270 on Y. So I'm just going to reset that Y position to zero. And at my first frame, I'm going to keyframe it. I'm going to step forward 30 frames and set that Y position to something like 150. Step forward to frame 60, set that to something like negative 240. Let's step forward to frame 90, set it to something like 75. Step forward to 120, set it back down to zero. And now if we run it, you'll see that we've got that little bouncing animation running right through the array. And as you can see, that gives us a much more interesting animated result than if we're relying just simply on the built-in animation modes. Now, the important thing to bear in mind is that my animation loop was 120 frames. So if we actually look at that here, you can see those keyframes there. But the fact is that this little animations I've created has to work for every single element of the array within the duration of the sequence replicator. So these keyframes are in absolute terms not entirely representative of what's happening because they have to be fitted into that re replicator duration. A little bit complicated, just an important thing to bear in mind. So you'll notice there's also this option here when we choose from keyframes of use source animation. Now currently our original source circle here doesn't have any any animation on it, but if we were to come into it and for example, let's, let's animate the scale. So I'm going to at the first frame set a scale keyframe and maybe set that to 50%. I'll come forward to, I don't know, 40 frames this time, set that up to maybe 125. I'll come forward to 80 frames and set that to 100. And now if you run it, you'll see that they are looping through the animation of that circle as well as the sequence replicator animation. So if we come back and remove that position animation, you'll see we're just left with that scale animation that's on the original circle. Oh, there's one other thing I want to do. So let's do that here. Let's try animating the rotation. So I'm just going to remove that scale and let's try animating the rotation. So let's set a keyframe for the X. Let's come forward to frame 40 and let's set that to 180. So let's run it. Nothing is happening. So why is nothing happening? That is because the replicator needs to be set to 3D. So if we switch it, switch it to 3D and we run it, you'll see that those are indeed flopping around like that. So if you're trying to add a 3D rotation, you just need to make sure the replicator is set to 3D. 
So I've deleted that rotation on that original circle and I want to show you something that's a little bit odd, uh, obviously a bit of a oversight on Apple's part. What a surprise. And that's that if you try to use rotation with the from keyframes, it doesn't actually work. So actually, I'm just going to switch that shape, come over to the geometry for the circle, and I'm just going to remove most of the curvature. So we've got these rounded squares. Come back over here. Let's try keyframing that rotation. So let's keyframe it there. Let's come forward to, I don't know, 60 frames and set it to 360. So now if you run it, you'll notice that we just get the rotation, but we don't get it sequencing through. It's almost as though it's completely disregarding the fact that it's meant to be using the keyframes. Don't know why. Anyway, something to bear in mind. So let's just remove that and restore our circle to full roundness. And I'm going to show you a couple more things that are pretty interesting. So first of all, I'm going to switch to through for the sequencing. And I'm going to add the color parameter and I'm going to pick a color. So you'll notice that the color that I've chosen here is not correctly represented in the array. And that's because our original circle was not white. So if I come back to my original circle, I come to filters and stylize and fill, for example, and let's just set it to white. You'll notice now that color is correct. So if you want the color here to be interpreted correctly, your original object has to be white. So I'm also going to come over to the replicator. I'm going to increase the number of rows to 10 and I'm just going to increase the height to 955 so it all fits. And you can see that that color is now running through the pattern. I'm just going to turn the spread down to zero. If we do that, we just got one single column, as you can see. But if we switch the unit size to custom, we can actually control the width of this separately from the spread. The spread just spreads it out like that, as you know, softens off the selection. But with this, we can be more precise about the selection itself. So I can set the end to 20%, and now I'm actually getting three adjacent columns like that. Or I could set it to 30% and get even more, or 50% and literally get half the array. So that's pretty useful. Let's make this a little bit more interesting by adding the scale parameter. And let's maybe set that scale to 50%. So that is our custom selection there. But let's also look at the custom traversal. And what the custom control does is instead of automating the passage of the pattern through the array, it allows you to set it manually. And we can obviously keyframe that. But what it also means is that we can modify our array using the sequence replicator, but have it static if that's what we choose. And the other thing I want to point out is that we can actually stack sequence replicators. So I'm actually going to add a new one, sequence replicator. And let's just maybe add a scale to that. And again, let's use through. And you can see that we've actually got that superimposed over our original static array. We've got this new animation like this. So you can keep stacking them up and they will interact with each other. Very, very useful. So I could go on forever about this and I think it's probably a good time for me to stop. But I think I've shown you there's a lot more to this than you probably imagine. And I hope it's been interesting and I hope to see you again soon.